viewers, Super TT here. Another video for you, another karting one. I've turned up to a track that I've never been to before, and we're gonna see how well I can do. I have been out in the, in the Sodi carts, and that session went something like this. Understeer, 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 and a bit more understeer. But if we, uh, if we re rewind that, go back, go back to the beginning. Let's have a look at this session. So here at uh, Daytona Sandown, and um, it's a track that I've never been to before. So we're gonna have a bit of a blast with it, have a bit of fun. And I'm first out in a pro kart session, and then we're gonna be driving the D-Max carts later. Uh, so there's the track that way, the, the tarmac with uh, the carts going around it, that thing, yeah. I got around this corner and I was discovered my disguise was foiled. You yeah. are Super GT, right? Yeah. <laughs> you watch the videos? Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> You're famous now, mate. <laughs> You're on the video. So I made that kid famous. We're now going to go out for a, I think it's a 20 minute session. And uh, looking for my cart, there it is, number 25. Walked right past it. It's been a lot, it's been a long, long time since I've driven one of these kind of carts. Um, when was the last time? Probably at Butmore Park last year. Don't drive them all that much these days. But let's go out on track and uh, give it a go. All for fun, all good fun. New circuit. Let's see how it is then. So this is the start, start line there. Already going flying past people. Look at that. We've uh, we've sussed it already within five seconds. Okay, coming around here, very long, fast right-hander. That guy went to the outside, probably the wrong side to go. And um, Penny Cart's going fairly slowly here. Going to try and go around the outside, and we succeed in doing so. And uh, having to do a bit of a slalom course here. Early doors, cart off, yellow flag. Another car joins joins the pileup, uh, kind of akin to a Monza Turn One on Forza. See someone crash? Just go and join them. Why not? We've got this last little sequence here. And what I would say is that these are uh, pro carts. They're actually probably more tiring than what we're used to in like Club 100 because they're much more understeery. They're actually more violent on the arms in many ways, actually. The speed isn't as high, but the force required to get them to turn is extremely high very noticeable on, on the old shoulders and, and arms that was a little bit wide experimenting with lines though with these hairpins um, often through hairpins we're probably going to want to take quite a late apex or take quite a bit of a mid apex there and uh, there are a fair few hairpins here at this track as we have seen so far so again plenty of traffic all good fun though, trying to negotiate them, trying to get through as quickly as possible whilst learning the circuit at the same time into the final corner then. And uh, go, go in for a little spin that guy there. We're taking a very questionable racing line, one and two. Are we going to go for a big scent here at turn one though? Quite, quite, a, quite a scary corner that one. The entry very very fast, not quite flat out unless you're an absolute maniac or just really really good or you want to go wide on the exit uh, we've got overtaken by this by this chap now my racing driver excuse is i'm heavier than this guy so any reason i'm slower is well i'm heavier there you go and um he's actually going to drive off but that is all, all good you know this is definitely something you should do if you're trying to learn a track um just try and tag along see what the quicker guys are doing see if you can learn anything, see the lines that they're taking. Another guy going for a spin. You see already he's gapped me a couple of cart lengths in the space of, what, 30 seconds, and he's, he's left me for dead. Absolutely sent me to the realm. He's going flying past that dude. He's got a cart between us, so he's, he's gone. He's absolutely sent me. Um, but we're still learning the circuit. The main thing here really is that I'm just practicing the, oh my god, that's a bit wide. Trying to just practice the track so I know what I'm doing before I do the D-Max race later. Um, traffic got really quite intense by this point here as uh, I caught back up to the dude that went past me. And um, fling over to the right last second there. 
and try to get back past him. Can we do that? It's only a practice session, but you know, sometimes these practice sessions get really quite heated. It's going to flood the inside, akin to Hacken and Schumacher. I'm going to use a large portion of grass, please, on the right hand side, and um, follow him through the traffic. He gets way through here. Am I going to be able to dive bomb and follow him through? Not quite. I was a little bit too far back. But uh, can we go for the move here instead? The space opens up. Not really a braking zone there, though. Kind of just send it in. We can overtake on the way out, and that's kind of something you can do a lot um, when people are taking too far, too fast of an entry in. They cost themselves on the way out. Overtaking on the way out, according to them. And uh, jobs are good and mate. Okay, rounding out that lap. I'm fairly happy with the pace. Um, we found our friend who watches the videos, or some of them. And uh, we absolutely obliterated going up the inside. Boom, job done. Two for one, in fact. And um, I felt like the seat was moving. My, my seat was moving. I didn't do it up tight enough or something was wrong with it. So I decided to change it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you to change Yeah. So my main hope here really is that this new cart would be 10 times faster. Um, well, let's see. It's sometimes it's a good idea, you know, just to try and test two carts if possible, so you just know uh, if the first one you're driving was a bit rubbish. I, that's another excuse, but you've got to get good at excuses. That is a key component of being a racing driver. If you don't have an excuse for every situation, then what are you even doing? Okay, this guy goes deep, boom, cut back, well, I'll try to anyway, smack into him, put your hand up just to say I'm sorry, when I'm not sorry at all, I'm going past it, uh, job done there. But yeah, t testing out two different carts I suppose, you can just see, um, maybe the first car had too much oversteer, understeer, this one feels fine, the first one felt alright apart from the seat. Uh, this guy just crawling to a dead standstill on, under a yellow flag, probably more likely to cause another accident if anything. Just um, just look at Mugello, the F1. When you slow down too much at the start, boom, you see what happens. Uh, going past our famous friend again, um, and then we've got overtaken. I had a little battle, a little ding dong battle with this dude, tried to cut him back. The track goes left, couldn't quite do anything there. And um, potential send here into the, into the mid hairpin, didn't quite send it as it pinches up a little bit. I'll stay behind him for now. Follow him through this this long right. You see, he just pulls away there. You see, he gains like a couple of cart lengths. Um, but that was me done. I had I'd seen enough of the circuit. I'd, I'd done enough, um, and I'd rather save my energy for the uh, the second race coming up in a moment. Nice one. Good. Yeah. 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 So that was all in preparation for a 30 minute race I'm doing in the D-Max carts. And we're gonna go and do that in a second. But first, uh, the reason why I'm here is, is Joe Achilles. He just invited me, he's a BMW M2 owner. He has a, his own YouTube channel and he's kindly given me the keys to his M135i. So I'm gonna go and give that a hoon for 20 minutes and then come back and do the half hour race. Steve, can you wait to the side for me mate? Engineer's just taking your car. He's gonna bring it down sure. in a minute. Which corner should I push you off on? <laughs> Turn one, mate. Turn All right, yeah. yeah, full Great speed. Way. This is the best car in the fleet, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah. Cheers. Do you want the um, pedals on the curb here? Uh, yes, please. Okay, here we go then, D-Max this time, and uh, this is more similar to what I usually drive with the Club 100 carts, so about about the same in terms of speed. Um, both both D-Max and Club 100 are using Rotax engines, they're about the same speed around most circuits. Uh, so I'm more familiar with this sort of speed uh, compared to the Pro Kart. So let's see, you see immediately how much faster this thing is uh, in a straight line. 
and, and the grip is a lot better as well. Still get understeer, of course, but nowhere near as much. Um, so I paid I paid the guys here to give me the best cart from back in the back in the shed. So thank you to the Daytona boys back in the shed for giving me cart 127, which apparently is an absolute monster. Let's hope it is. I paid them enough. I bribed them enough. Uh, so yellow flag there, and then boom. Let's react and get away and try and overtake as many cars as possible. Um, just a casual five carts overtaken within about four seconds there, as you do. Negotiated just fine, and, and the secret there really was just acceleration on the way out of the corner rather than going in. Um, we had a red flag situation, never, never a good uh, thing to see. Hopefully everyone was right, well they were all right. I'm not quite sure exactly what happened or where, but um, red flag, slow down, stop. Someone's hurt. Something's happened. Uh, fortunately, it all resolved itself. This guy went flying past. I'm guessing a cart may well have just broken down and they had to replace it and it was stranded somewhere. But we get back underway and this is uh, what is it, a 10 minute uh, qualifying session. So we're going to go for my fastest lap here and see what it looks like. You see just how much quicker it is uh, compared to the pro carts. Um, I couldn't see really because I was wearing my dark visor. You can see it's getting dark already. And that was only going to get worse as the race went on. So another excuse. I've, I've really got them all lined up for you today. And, um, but this is my this is my quickest lap in qualifying session. As we're going to the mid hairpin here, and I found that it was quite tricky on the brakes because these carts, unlike Club 100, they have a system where if you hold down the brake, you can't press the throttle, so you can't double pedal. But there was a bit of an overlap, so I would release the brake and I still couldn't get on the power, like for like half a second. So I had to kind of adjust to that and release the brake sort of earlier than I would have thought so it's quite tricky to, to adjust to that but um, adjust to it I did um, to an extent anyway uh, so this was a little bit later on in the qualifying session and you can see plenty of traffic um, so I'm not going to be setting any quick lap times here but dive dive bombing three cars <laughs> into that corner absolutely savage stuff uh, all good fun and this is where you can really see the waft of this cart it's as if I've got myself on the set of Too Fast Too Furious and put some nitrous oxide on the car, pressed the button and gone flying up the main straight and then probably over a bridge in uh, that famous scene back in that film. Um, and after the session that turned out to be a pole position. Um, so again thank you to the boys back in the Daytona shed for giving me such a fantastic package here with cart 127 which in fact was the quickest cart in the fleet the guy wasn't lying he wasn't lying to me which is good because I paid him quite a lot as I said um, and that is a top tip just bribe the people to get the quickest carts and uh, that's the job done really isn't it right then race start um, so it's like a rolling start up to the start line then you boot it and hopefully say goodbye to everyone as you drive off into the distance and here we go then coming up to the line waiting for the green flag there it is and he's waving it so we are underway second place getting left for dead you can see i can have a couple of looks over and take the race in line uh, so this situation here is really just do a sebastian vettel from 2011 break the one second drs barrier and jobs are good in. so that's my main task really just settle into the race as quick as possible and uh, you can really get a lot of the race done on lap one. They say you can't win a race on turn one or lap one, but you can. You can if you just if you really get a good gap on your first lap, um, especially on a short race, you can uh, you really do some damage, some big damage early doors. Um, so that was a, a nice clean lap to, to open our account here in the race over the line and go. Do apologise for the drop in FPS, but that's what happens at night when uh, there's a lack of light. Uh, it gets a little bit shoddy the footage, but hopefully it's not too bad for you. And uh, I, I can't tell you exactly what the gap is here. We've got a car slow there or stopped. Looking over the shoulder, take a quick look. It's always good to know what exactly is going on in the race. How far am I ahead? Am I pulling away? Um, 
So in many ways, you shouldn't look over your shoulder. You should just go and just focus on your lap times. But at the same time, I think it's always good just to know exactly what's going on around you. And um, we had to deal with back markers, of course. So again, here, look, it goes in way too hot on the way in. You just get on the way out. It's so easy. You don't have to, don't have to force the movement way in. You probably gain more time doing it this way. In fact, I'm going for a move on the way out of the corners. And again, another move done there. And uh, jobs a good one. Drinking game for jobs a good one. And look at this speed here. I've obviously saved some of the nitrous oxide for a bit later. Boom! One cart, two cart. Absolutely unreal speed. The research and development pace. Daytona shed is literally unrivaled. No one else could quite match that. Uh, a couple of more back markers here. I tap him here, has a look over his shoulder, and then I, he gets flustered a little bit. He looks over his shoulder, smacks into the other car, and uh, spins. So he got a little bit confused and uh, or flustered there, and uh, it created his own demise as he spun out. Um, but his problem is not mine, so I continue into the final corner of lap. I don't know. We're probably about, you can see it's evidently dark by this point. But now, this is where things really begin to unravel, and I try to do my best Lewis Hamilton impression as we come into the far, uh, final couple of corners. And through here, boom. All of a sudden, I can't turn. Um, because, look there, my, my rear uh, right wheel has come off. Well, it's still attached, but it's not really working as intended, at a 45 degree angle. Stance Nation in the house. Um, there it is. That That is not an ideal setup for your rear camber. Again. Right. They're gonna bring one out for you. Okay, cool. Mate, what have you done there? Drove too quickly, mate. Okay, so we got a replacement cart. Hopefully this is just as good from the Daytona shed, and um, we get the tea the tea cart. Um, so I have no idea what happened here because well I was in the lead by a bit, and then obviously I lost a load of time there. So I think I was in about third or fourth by this point here, and you see it is much darker now. The shadow realm is descending upon us, and that is quite a worrying. Thing to behold um, but we just continue here just finish off the race and we can see what the results were at the end uh, so we've got a fresh cart here cold tires um, but just trying to get some life into them with our insane tire warming skills um, the race is still going on here but by the end we just fast forward it here to the to the end of the race as we cross the line where's the checker flag it's over there somewhere one of those pixels on the screen um, but that is it we're going to bring it home and very kindly Joe who's in the white suit just up in front, up in front there he said um, that because I was in the lead when that happened that I should have the w uh, race win but I don't know that wouldn't happen in F1 would it but there you go um, I hope you enjoyed the video as always something a little bit different and it was it was good fun and obviously I have to thank Joe for inviting me to this to this event it was a good laugh I really enjoyed it good to meet him as well as a fellow BMW M2 owner. Um, but there we go. I'm going to finish it off there and have a little chat with Joe and uh, see what happens. Keep on working. Obviously, you're, obviously, we know what happened there. And instead of being classified first, you've been classified as third. Joe's like, you never will be. You just put your foot on the You weren't leading by miles. <laughs> I don't mind, to be honest. It doesn't matter. I mean, he's pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realise it was you. It was the first no, no, let's give it yeah, yeah. 100%, Steve. Oh, right. No getting out. Yes. I'm on the podium with this legend. Yes. yes. I came past you. I was just like, he's going very slowly. Like, my, uh, my, um, my right rear just came off. <laughs> <laughs> my left rear did exactly. I saw the picture. Yeah. My left rear did the same in the qualifying. Yeah, on, on turn one. Yeah. Okay guys, that's it from me. I didn't film a proper outro, but this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching as always. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, give us a sub if you're new. I shall see you all next time. Take care, take it easy, and uh, I'll see you in another video very soon.